What's up guys? How's it going? Welcome to uh, another episode of Big Easy Quest. Gonna do some fishing today. Gonna do some cat. On uh, my home lake, Lake Red Rock. You guys uh, wanna join along with me for the ride? You're more than welcome. Oh man, it's been a while. It's been a while, it's been a while. Well, not a while. I've been fishing this whole time. It's just you guys haven't seen the most recent stuff that I that I can do. So, but, uh, or what I've been doing anyway. So, try to get out a video a week. So, show you guys uh, what I'm doing and kind of fishing I'm doing. So, yeah. So, welcome to Big Easy Quest. Without you, right? Oh man. Never ever want to leave without you. Roll her on out. What's up? So we made it. We've got bait, we've got shad, we've got bluegills, we've got rods, everything's all rigged up. And guess what? I don't change. So whenever I'm fishing in Alabama, I don't change anything that I do here in Iowa. So if anybody tells you, oh, you need big rods this, big rods that for big catfish, no you don't. Uh, medium action rod, soft tip, um, nice backbone will do you just fine. I use all medium action just because of when that fish hits, I want the backbone for the hook set. After that, I loosen the drag to where that fish can swim wherever he wants to. Cause usually I don't fish structure. So I'm a, I'm a drifter and a dragger. So I'll fish ledges. A lot of times there's not that much um, structure on those ledges that I do fish. So, but uh, yeah, other than that, same thing. We're gonna start trolling. We're back here in White Breast. Um, there's some fish here in about four to five foot of water, so we're gonna go ahead and target them bad boys today and uh, go from there. So, other than that, hopefully fish on. During the summertime, I usually like to use, when that water starts to get over 70 degrees, you can use shad, um, but drifting a lot of times, the fish will swipe the bait or just grab it and go. And a lot of times those, uh, those shad can get kind of real soft in these summer months. So a lot of times I'll use big old bluegills. So this is actually one of the smaller ones that we usually use, so, but uh, yeah. So that's how we're gonna plan to do it. And all I do is I basically chunk them up just like I do, you know, your shad, put them in just a little half inch or one inch increments. And uh, yeah, get ready for the takedown. Biggest is about six pounds. Uh, like I'd call the red rock grind, but uh, they are definitely when they when they do uh, hit the baits, they're hitting them pretty good. So this is about a four pounder maybe. 
So that was on a cut shad head. Come here. Not a bad little fish. A little chunky dude. We got plenty of bait this year with all the shad in the lake. Yeah, it's about a four pound fish. Take him. Time to release him. Hey Sean, what's up about her ghost? bigger fish here in this deeper water. <clears throat> so a lot of people ask me, they say, man, how do you how do you find the fish? How do you get on them? So this morning I started out in two foot of water. I had one little nibble. So within a half hour I decided to move and go to about 10 foot. So I caught one fish in 10 foot of water in a half hour, so I thought, well, I know how red rock can produce. So I decided, well, maybe since the recent cold fronts of these fish, maybe they're deeper. So I decided to hit a channel ledge that's about 23 foot, and it comes out of the channel ledge and gets into about 20 foot of water, which is a big, a big huge mud flat in between where the channel ledge runs. And uh, so far it's been a pretty good drift. Uh, this drift so far has produced seven fish. Um, I've only been fishing for, you know, in this spot for about 40, 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. Um, nothing big, just nice fighting channels just like this, having fun, um, you know, reeling them in, releasing them, having a good time. That's what it's all about. So. Um, these right here, I would consider good eaters. Um, my rule of thumb is anything over five pounds goes back in. Um, and then anything under, you know, if anybody's fishing with me, if they want to take any, anything under five pounds, hey, have at it. So, uh, but I just look at the bigger ones. Uh, you know, they got a little bit better genetics to, uh, yeah. So, there you go. Must be in Dink City. Grabbing the baits and they're not taking it quite yet. We are straddling the channel ledge too, so 
These could be bigger fish that are just doing a lot of short biting too. But at least they're at least, at least they're taking So we'll find we'll find somebody that wants to have some fun. Like I said, never give up. Um, like I said this morning, started out five foot of water, read some fish. I think they were carp. There was a few catfish in there because I was getting some hits, but I'm pretty sure they were probably smaller. Um, moved out to about 10 to 15 foot of water. Caught one. So I'm like, oh, all right, so that's a little bit better. Moved out into about 15 to 20 foot of water and started catching them like crazy. So, but then, I'm going to say about an hour and a half, I was on fish. Moved completely where they were last week, so I had to refine it again. So just goes to show you, just kept, just keep checking different uh, uh, depths. You know, as far as as far as where your fish are, where your more active fish are at, because with these temperatures changing, cold fronts coming through. Uh, I mean, it has a storm here for probably I'm gonna say three and a half weeks to a month. So fish were just getting into the pattern and staying there because we weren't having any weather changes. So since we just now started having some weather changes, some storms roll through, some cold fronts, it might push these fish a little deeper, or it might turn them on and, and make them back. Majority of the time, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah, these guys are short right now. So majority of the time, you just find your active fish. Now, if I would have had some trailer hooks on, uh, I would have caught them. Usually, the majority of the time, if you want to catch these uh, short biting fish, you just cut some smaller baits. So, I got some decent sized shad on. So, uh, the ones I have caught, they've just engulfed it. The ones I haven't, it's either just taking it, and holding it down, and with the boat push pressure on the, on the on the bait, they just pop off. So, uh, yep. So you don't have to necessarily tie on a trailer hook. Just cut your bait just a little smaller, so, and that will uh, that will take out that whole uh, short bite. So, other than that, yeah, we found them. They were anywhere from you know 15 to 20 foot. I think right now I'm at 25 foot. Again, I'm on that channel edge. So, fish might be a little bit more finicky, which they are, they're short bite, so they're just grabbing the bait, so like I said, if I was in a tournament, I'd be cutting smaller baits, and uh, then they'd just take the whole, whole bait in, in the hook, so, yep, there you go, so far so good, it's been a decent day, not eating fish, um, doing some testing on some products, so, uh, Stay tuned, you know, in the future for some possibly uh, new products coming out of Big Easy Quest. So, um, other than that, yeah, it turned out to be a pretty good day, I'd say. Uh, today we're side drifting. You can see the wind's pushing the side of the boat. Got the drift sock out the front, towards the front, counterbalancing the, the weight of the motor. So that way it always keeps me sideways with the wind. And I can keep my rods all spread out nice and neat. So, hope you guys enjoy the today's show. I'm going to go ahead and cut her off and uh, head home, take a shower, kind of maybe maybe catch a nap before my daughter uh, uh, starts her varsity, uh, varsity game tonight. 